Hey, what's up y'all? It's G or Gari. I answer to both. On the internet, you can find me at Don't Undersalt, either here on YouTube or on Instagram. So today I'm in Kuala Lumpur at the restaurant Nadodi, which means journey in Sri Lankan. Nadodi is a really fantastic modern Indian restaurant that explores Southern Indian cuisine, Sri Lankan cuisine, and how both of those foods and their people made their journey to here in Malaysia. So before this 11 course feast, I had an opportunity to sit down with the chefs they gave me a little insight of what was to come, and now I want to share that journey with you. Um, I drink a lot of things. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> definitely a, more of a wine drinker than anything else, but I do really enjoy whiskey. Interested to see how it yeah, goes with the food. it's not just about the whiskey itself, it's about the whole complement that comes together. Right. Where you have the perfume to showcase more of the character. Right. So that makes it very special of the journey. It's very tasty. It's like a cumin tea cookie. So here's the prelude. It's our first course. So we generally would be doing for two people is uh, Palli Palayam Achu. So Palli Palayam is basically a place on the coast of River Kaveri in Tamil Nadu. The famous things from there is a chicken preparation, which is nice spiced up. We're using, utilizing black pepper. So what we have done right here is uh, that Achu Muruku is filled with portabello mushrooms. On top of this, we have some truffle cream along with some marigold leaves and some dust of the porcini mushrooms. It's so pretty. Achu Muruku, basically this Muruku is also called as rose cookies and has been an integral part of our festivals and special occasions down in the Sri Lankan as well as in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Travel here, uh, which is uh, rava fry prawn. Uh, Tamil Nadu and Southern cuisine is mostly on the seafood side. They do on the snacks way of doing uh, semolina, rava coated yes. with masala. We thought of doing with the local Saba King prawns coated with some white and black sesame with some blood orange gel on top, which we think that it really complements the flavor of the prawns as well as some beluga caviar right on top. That represents Kerala. Kiri Bhat. Kiri bath is a breakfast uh, rice and coconut milk based rice cakes. They eat them with different kind of sambals. Yes. Mm. It starts out with this really nice subtle masala flavor and kind of builds up in your mouth. Really cool is the tool is like shaped on the top, but then it's actually stuffed with the mushroom mousse inside. Beautiful and delicious. This is really nice and not just because of the caviar. This is a South, South Indian dish I've actually had different versions of. They made like the shrimp pepper fry in the middle. Very nice, very heavy garlic flavor. I've never had the traditional version of this dish, so I really don't have anything to compare to. But I like it. Mostly everyone gets what I'm doing, but this one waiter is very weirded out that I'm talking to the camera by myself. <laughs> This is the one I was telling you about. Ah, uh, yes! Yeah. I really love the plating. Um, I always appreciate how the visual applies to the taste of the food. As I always say, people eat with their eyes first. Wow, okay. I do have reference for this dish. I love vada. I eat them very often. Um, they have completely transformed it. It's more of a cracker with this um, paste in the middle. but you still get that flavor of dal. I really, really enjoy this. Um, Sakura Ebi is very delicate and mild, uh, so I don't really get a lot of that flavor, um, but they're those cute little shrimpy guys. Chef Yavin was uh, super excited about this dish. This was the one that he mentioned was his favorite from this new menu. So here we have your next course. It's called as uh, Expectation. Okay. The homage to the egg roast that we have in Tamil Nadu and Kerala. Well, of course, anything, again, that comes with caviar makes me super happy. Um, actually, when Chef was describing this dish, it reminded me of a dish that I had at Tamaka in New York when I was interviewing Chef Chintin and Ronnie. Wow, so velvety. Uh, the kurma adds a really nice little spice bomb. It's a little bit meaty almost, not just in texture, but even in flavor. It's like elevated Indian sports watching food. Leeks kind of remind me of like, again, just eating a cheesy dip or like a sweet onion dip, like my recipe here on YouTube. Yeah. 
it's our next dish, which is we are calling it Easter Day. So I'm actually eating their new menu this evening, but chefs and I talked about a dish that's from their current menu. So uh, if the 11 courses weren't enough, they've sent out a 12th course for me. It definitely has that really chutpatty flavor like dried mangoes or amchur powder. Garlic, the chilies. It really has a nice crunch, but it's this like really smooth foam. I also love that they use the little matkas as the bowl. Um, and as my waiter so kindly mentioned, these are made by a local potter. I'm just loving all of the dishware here. Chopsticks. Okay, next course is uh, sarf thai terle, which is basically a scallop. Imagine it uh, in the form of a uh, thai terle pasta. Here is add some moringa curry to it. Going to do some charcoal oil around it so that it gives you a little smokiness. And what is the what is the like traditional inspiration for this dish? Uh, uh, moringa curry. As okay. we use a lot of moringa. Uh, yeah. Every home has got a moringa plant. Uh, the flowers are used to make dry sabji. In some seasons, the moringa is integral part of us. Okay, pasta made out of scallop. I'm so intrigued. I sort of wish the noodles were, the noodles, the scallop noodles, were a little more separated. I feel like because they're made into that little round bundle, they kind of stick together. I mean, they're easy to pull apart, but I don't want to waste a bite with two noodles in one bite, if that makes sense. This dish doesn't feel as Indian to me. Um, I've never had moringa curry though, so I don't really have anything to compare it to. The flavors are more like scallop, very, very slight hint um, of any kind of masala. And then of course you've got like the fishy umami from the caviar. This is the Naola Nasi because uh, Naola is a small little township in Sri Lanka. It's very famous for its pineapples. So during my interview with the chefs, I asked them both what their favorite dishes from this menu were. And Chef Ilias told me that this particular dish uh, the Nawal Anasi is his favorite, and he told me that I would need to break into it. So, let's break in. It's prawn head. It is so incredibly tender. The texture of the prawn head, we all know how much I love my prawn head, except for the fact that this pineapple thing is really quite tacky. I can't eat the pineapple sheet anymore. Backwaters of Alipi is what we want to call it. Uh, this is uh, tiger grouper. This is a suvid cooked fish along with some osiatra caviar right on top. It's paired with little black garlic flowers right here and also some black garlic gel as well. Yuzu foam right here. Mm. So this dish is tasty. It's cooked well. We've gotten less Indian as we've gone through um, the flavors. And again, I don't necessarily always have a frame of reference for the southern Indian cuisine. I especially appreciate the front of house staff. A few of them have checked in on me and every time they come over they ask how my journey is, not my meal. So I love that they are consistent with the nomad story. Um, it's really quite a lovely service experience. Salad cleanser. Okay. Which is basically made from a nartangi. Nartangi is a southern word where they have a wild life. Nothing wildlife. Yeah. I'll be honest with you guys, I don't always love palate cleansers. I generally think that they are kind of wasteful of course in the meal. I guess it does give you a little time to breathe, but they don't generally do anything but give me something cold while I wait to eat my next um, hot savory dish. Yeah, I stand by what I said. Um, you know, it's supposed to uh, cleanse your palate, which to me means kind of wipe it clean. Um, but this is just really tart. I mean, it's delicious, it's very tasty. Um, but it's like most other fine dining palate cleansers that I've had, where it's just another creative dish that packs a punch in flavor and really doesn't live up to the cleanser uh, moniker. Uh, two part dish. Okay. Yeah. So we have some hot flash over here. Wow. This is Yes. Okay. So every time you have a bite in the duck, you yeah. can go for the rasa. Yeah. 
Very excited about this rasam. It smells so delicious. On one hand, this is giving me kind of like French classic duck vibes. Rasam and this stuffed zucchini blossom really bring it back to the Indianness for me. Okay. We do our signature biryani here. Just one. Wow. So with the new menu, uh, this one is uh, Iberico lamb biryani. Uh, uh, we use sira samba rice, which okay. is a short grain rice traditionally with the Tamil community, along with uh, bone marrow that has uh, peanut and coriander chutney, mint ki bundi. This biryani is very, very tasty. All right, I'm getting pretty full, uh, but before dessert, they've given me a pre-dessert. So I've made it to the 11th course. I am actually quite stuffed and uh, I am excited to break into this dessert. So chef just told me that the chocolate that's used in this is made by a family in Munar, Kerala. And they only, they don't sell the chocolate commercially. They just make it for their family and to educate others in their um, town about how to make chocolate. Um, but Chef has a exclusive agreement with them that wherever he goes, they will sell him the chocolate. It's really light, airy coconut pudding. All these things, I thought I was done. <laughs> Uh, just some pretty flowers for you. Uh, tangerine, ate de fruit, ati rasam bonbon. Ati rasam bonbons are basically very classical, short, jaggery, rice flour, uh, meat, pancakes kind of. Either chocolate bonbon and inside is the ati rasam filling. The flavor of the ati rasam is the filling for this bonbon. I really like these. Uh, it's called Thai Matai. Well, it's a tool inspired by Thai Matai. Wow, what a meal. My menu highlights were definitely the expectation. Wondering if I talked to Chef about that pineapple cracker on top of the prawn roast, prawn head curry dish. I actually did. And we talked about how, um, you know, that, that disc was actually crisp when they sent it out from the kitchen. But depending on how long it takes the diner to eat it, especially someone like me who's incessantly taking videos and photos, it can become soggy. So we troubleshooted a couple different ways that they might be able to prevent that. Anyways, I was really grateful for him, to him for letting me be so honest about his food. This meal at Nadoti was really fantastic. Um, it was eye-opening for me to learn more about Southern Indian cuisine, about Sri Lankan cuisine, um, definitely parts of the country, parts of the subcontinent that I don't know as much about their foods. And stay tuned for my article in Platform Magazine where I'll give you the full 411 on my conversations with Chef. Thanks again for tuning in. Bye!